Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to look at language modeling and specifically language modeling using an approach called n-grams. I'll just start with a little example here. So let's say I'm talking to my phone using one of these um, Google apps and I say the words, I ate a cherry. Then we, we're getting in some speech signal here and Google correctly recognizes this as I ate a cherry. But how does Google know that I didn't say something else that is acoustically basically the same? Something like, I ate a jerry. And let's just say here for the sake of the argument that the acoustic signal between these two are exactly the same. How does Google know that it should output, I ate a cherry? Just in case you don't know, this is jerry. So if we assume that the acoustics are exactly the same, what Google could do is it could say, well, this sequence of written words up front before I get the acoustics in is more probable than this sequence here. Okay. So if we knew that that sequence of words without looking at the acoustics, that the probability of this sequence of words is higher than the probability of um, this sequence of words, then Google could say, okay, well, I got this acoustics in, it looks exactly the same like this one, but because I know beforehand that this sequence is more probable, I'm going to output that sequence. Let's look at another example. So here I'm using um, WhatsApp and I'm typing to a friend and I am, I've written, are you keen to? And then um, WhatsApp is giving me some options for the next words. How does it know which words are likely to follow the words that I've already typed? In other words, how does it know that the probability of maybe, given that I've already typed, are you keen to, how does it know that this probability of the word maybe is relatively high given these preceding words? Now, in both of these cases, this is um, basically the problem of language modeling. We want to predict maybe the probability of a written sentence, um, or we want to predict the probability of a word given the words that preceded it. Both of these are um, what we call the language modeling problem. And in this video, we're going to solve this problem using the n-gram language modeling approach. Okay, cool. So let's just formalize that a little bit. So um, in that speech recognition example, what we really wanted to know, what is the probability of a sequence of words where I have word one, word two, up to uh, word capital T. And in that second case, the autocomplete example, um, what we needed was we basically had to know what is the probability of some word given the preceding words, word one, word two, up to the word just before the word that I'm currently looking at. Okay, so that was for the autocomplete example. Now, a model that can tell me this or a model that can tell me this, and in a second we, we will see that if you know this, then you can also calculate this. A model that can calculate either of these two things, that is what we call a language model. So what I will sometimes do is I will just write this a little bit more compactly as W1 to T. So that indicates the sequence from 1 to capital T. Um, okay, how do we calculate how do we calculate this thing? So what we're going to do is we're going to repeatedly apply the chain rule of a probability theory in order to calculate this thing. So what's the chain rule of probability theory? I always need to look this up on Wikipedia. So it basically says that the joint probability of A and B is equal to the conditional probability of A given B times the probability of B. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to repeatedly apply this to this thing. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're first going to say, well, W1, this is my little B event and then all the rest that's here that is my um, a event okay and so what you can then write is that we have the probability of a given b times the probability of b so we've got the probability of that p of w2 w3 up to w capital t given b which is w1 times the probability of B, which is W1. Cool. Okay, 
And now we can apply that again. So now what we do is we treat W2 as B and we re uh, treat all the rest here, all of that stuff that becomes A. Okay, and we apply that again. Okay, so now we, what we get here is the probability of green A, which is W3, W4, dot, 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 W capital T, given B, um, okay, which is W2. And then we also have the W1 coming from here, W1, times the probability of green B, which is probability of W2, but you also need to take that W1 along here. So that one goes there, given W1, times the probability of W1. And you can probably see where this is going. So you can continue in this way, and you end up with the probability in the general case. We end up right at the end with just this W capital T, W capital T, given, and then we've got everything that preceded it from the first word up to the word that was just before the end of the sentence, okay, times, okay, and then we've got the second term, which is that second to last word, t minus 1, given w1 to t minus 2, times, okay, and then dunk, 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 and then right at the end here, we've got these two guys here, so we've got p of w2 given w1 times the p of w1. And we can write that a little bit more compactly using this product notation where we say this is the product um, and we start at little t is equal to 1 up to big T of the probability of w little t given everything that preceded it. This is exactly um, this, okay, where you treat w1 a little bit um, carefully because w1 doesn't have anything in the on the condition side. Sometimes you would also see people write this, um, the term here, you would also see the alternative which is something like uh, p of wt given w less than t which just Im implies everything that came before it. So that's an alternative way of writing that um, thing there. Okay, now the important thing here is that we actually haven't made any assumptions yet. It looks like we kind of simplify this, but we really didn't. All of this is exact, okay? So if you know these conditional probabilities and you can write them out, then you can calculate this overall probability here. And that basically gets to what I said at the start, that if you know this, then you can calculate that. So if you have a model that tells us these conditional probabilities, then we can calculate this exactly. So we haven't made any assumptions yet. If we knew this, then we would be done, okay? But unfortunately, in the real world, we almost never know the true probabilities of, um, of these things, okay? The creator is the only one that really knows the true probability of a word given the word, all the words that preceded it. So we will have to make some assumptions. We will have to build a little model that we use in order to basically estimate these probabilities, these true probabilities. So in the notes, you will often see that what I do is um, when I want to indicate that we're using a model, um, then I put a little subscript or I put something after a semicolon. So I would write maybe P of X. And that would be the true probability. This is the one with that we don't know. Normally we model it. So I put a little theta there, for instance, to indicate this is a model of the true probability. Um, sometimes an alternative um, notation that I would use is I would say the probability of x conditioned on the model, okay, theta, this estimation approach or the model that we're using um, based on all of our assumptions that we build in. I think it's maybe worth saying that if you write p of x, almost never do you just have the true probability. It's almost always the case that you're making some assumption, um, modeling something, building some assumptions into the problem. And if we want to be explicit about it, then we write something with a little th theta there or a little theta there. Maybe that's the parameters of our model or the assumptions. Sometimes we're sloppy um, and I would just write p of x even though I'm basically referring to something um, with a model inside of it. I hope that makes sense and that's not too confusing.
So we need a model that tells us how to get these conditional probabilities.